Good morning, everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Uh, it is my hopes that you have gotten your week off to a great start. It is my desire that you are centered in your purpose and destiny and that you are striving to be the best version of yourself. I want to welcome you to uh, another episode of Morning Motivation. <coughs> Uh, it's not my plan to be long, but I do want to be very precise and deliberate in what I want to share with you today. First, I want to invite uh, everyone who watches this to take part in the 30 day transformation uh, course. We're doing it again. Uh, everybody gets a chance to work with yours truly on a one on one basis um, uh, within a 30 day window. Uh, which is normally four weeks, and we get work done. Uh, the information is in the description box. I'll try and remind you guys again, uh, but this is an opportunity to really hone in and uh, determine what may be holding you back, what obstacles are sitting in front of you that you are ready to overcome and discover how to do it and really get some true traction in a very short period of time to develop the momentum that you will need to navigate the labyrinthine corridors and challenges you will face as you strive to win. And that's what I want to talk to you about real briefly this morning is the courage that is required to be successful in this world, the courage that is required to achieve a level of success, to win in life, to achieve a level of greatness. See, I am a firm believer, and I was taught by my grandfather that when you truly apply yourself, when you remove yourself from an equation that labels you as a victim, when you stop uh, ascribing to the idea that someone else can stop you, it doesn't mean that people won't try. It doesn't mean that you necessarily got off to the greatest start possible. It doesn't mean that you aren't currently in an environment that is non-conducive to you achieving. It simply means that when you understand that whatever you need to achieve unbelievable heights in this life is hidden inside of you, that God planted a gift inside of you that is uniquely designed for your purpose and that absolutely nobody can stop it, that the very definition of destiny is that the more you try to stop it, the more you guarantee that it happens, meaning that you are built for every challenge that you're going to come across. The moment you decide that you're going to walk in that, things change. I believe that when you start to walk in that, that you don't have to chase greatness. Greatness will overtake you. When you start to understand that the storm isn't there to destroy you, when you start to understand that those obstacles, cr obstacles create uh, uh, the capacity for critical thought and for creativity, when you understand that the people you see as haters are really truly there to test your resolve, to see just how committed you are to walking in your destiny, things change. You need to understand that this isn't about ease. You need to understand that this isn't about circumventing uh, the struggles and challenges and, and, and frustrations and disappointments of like, it's about overcoming them. It's about conquering them. It's about pushing through. It's about understanding that you are equipped with something unique. The problem is a bunch of you have been neutralizing your gift. A bunch of you have been neutralizing your gift. What do you mean? You have shut your gift down. You have stopped operating in the uniqueness of your gift, which is what gives you value, which is what sits up and puts you in a place that nobody else can operate in. God gave you you because you were special and that's what you have to operate on. But you've neutralized the gift because you want to be accepted. You've neutralized the gift because you want to fit in. You've neutralized the gift because everybody else is operating in a certain way and you want to be able to fit in. You, you weren't meant to fit in. You weren't just, that's the problem with this world. Everybody's trying to be like everybody else instead of being like they are, are supposed to be being themselves, being what they were designed to be, being what their purpose demands of them. You are sitting up mingling with mediocrity and it's shutting you down. And you're wondering why you can only get so far because you are operating in a sphere of assimilation. Something that my 11th grade English teacher used to tell me all the time when she would see me hanging around certain people, she said, come here. What did I tell you? I said, I know, I know. Say, no, you don't know. If you knew, you wouldn't be doing Association brings about assimilation. What was she saying? You hang around them long, long enough, you're going to start to act like them. Find you people that are uh, 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 
aiming higher than where you're at. Find people who have already attained what you're trying to attain. Find people who are above average. Why? Because the truth of the matter is, no matter how you want to shake it, you're going to ultimately be the average of the five people you spend the most time around. Stop hanging around people who are happy being average. Stop hanging around people who are happy being mediocre. Start finding people that their very presence alone will challenge you to rise up and move ahead of where you're at, to rise up and live at the next level. You've got to start seeing the beauty of what's planted on the inside of you, but it takes courage to get outside of the box. Some of you are investing in people and things that lack the capacity to sustain or facilitate your growth. You can take a peach seed and plant it in a cup in the most fertile soil known to man, and it won't grow, it won't prosper, it won't bear fruit. Why? Because the cup lacks the capacity to produce the environment necessary for the fruit to for the for the for the uh, peach seed to actually do what it does. You need to be in a place where there's soil, where there's fertile soil. You got to also understand, yeah, that in immersing yourself in this fertile soil, you're going to get dirty. Immersing yourself in this fertile soil is going to create a level of and a, and, a, and a time of darkness. That darkness scares a lot of people away. Before something like a peach tree or an acorn, which becomes an oak tree, ever sprouts out. There's a point in a, a, a process, a gestation period in which the seed is completely immersed in darkness so that it can absorb the things necessary for it to sprout out before it's done. It's actually, but see, the darkness has been perceived as a hard and dangerous place, but sometimes the darkness is where you hide until you're able to face what you have to face. See, sometimes the darkness puts you in a secluded place where you can be covered and protected. Darkness does not always mean horrid and bad. It was Solomon that said with great certainty that God dwells in the darkness. Even the gross darkness does God dwell. God is not there's in that, no, nowhere that God can't be. And if God is there, then you're good. You've got to stop running from the process that's gonna to lead to your greatness, that's gonna to lead to your destiny. You gotta start making moves. You gotta start seeing things differently. You can't see through the lens of a victim and see what's in store for you if you step out. You gotta learn how to walk with an understanding and an anticipation of what your design is capable of producing. Finally, some of you need to break free of the illusion that God is standing in the way of your greatness. You know, some of you believe that God isn't hearing your prayer. Some of you believe that God is withholding blessings. Some of you believe that God is placing obstacles. God is allowing the enemy to prosper. No, this isn't about what you think about God. God is consistent. No matter how you view God, no matter how you view, view the most high, God is consistent in the way God moves and operates. No matter how you see God, I'm not here to tell you that. But what I'm telling you is God is consistent in God's movement. God isn't, isn't isolating or vacillating or capricious. God doesn't operate like that. God is consistent. So if you're operating with God, God is where God needs to be. So what's the problem? It's not what you think about God that's the problem. It's what it, what you think about you. You're thinking too lowly of yourself. You don't see the value in yourself. You haven't acknowledged or recognized the gift. It is the gift that will bring you before a great man. It is the gift that will make room for you. It is the gift that will open you up. It is the uniqueness of who you are, but you have been taught to shy away from it because it's not like everybody else. You've been taught to put it to the side because people won't accept you when you're walking in it. You're not 
not here to be accepted. You're not here to earn the approbation and approval, approval of other people. You are here to make your presence felt. You are here to leave an imprint in this world that will speak of you long after you're gone. You are here to change things. You are here to create new avenues of operation. You are here to inspire people who came from the same thing you came from and are believing how you used to believe. You got to step out of that dark place of thinking that 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 you don't belong that you don't have a place your place is in walking in your destiny your place is in making an impact you make room for yourself by operating with the gift that god has given you look i i have a saying that i say a lot now i i, I want to leave you with this a lot of you are frustrated because you believe god isn't hearing you because you're praying for things and you ain't getting answered. Well, let me explain something. Let me let me simplify the equation for you so you get an understanding here. Let me explain something. God will never deliver you from the giants he sent you to slay. See, some of you are designed to do some things that you're in a position to do right now, but it's uncomfortable. You were designed to do some things that are exceptional and extraordinary and phenomenal, but it puts you in a place where you're uncomfortable. It takes you out of your comfort zone. It takes you out of a place of mediocrity and average, and it puts you in a place where it demands something of you. It demands that you step out on faith. It demands that you walk out in the midst of a possibility that you may fail. That's okay. Failure isn't final if you don't quit. Failure doesn't become final until you give up and turn loose and quit. As long as you're breathing, as long as you're fighting, as long as you're pushing, you haven't failed. You may have setbacks. You may have detours. You may have delays. Delay does not mean denial. You better learn how to stand up. You better learn how to walk. You better learn how to live in it. Got a lot of people that are around you that you need to deal with. There's some people around you that you need to let go. Why? Because they will make it their business in life to tell you why you can't do it. They will make it their business in life to point out every reason why you're going to fail. They'll make it every they'll, they'll make it their business, their, their, their number one priority to literally extract every ounce of hope you have in you for your future. Why? Because they've already given up on theirs. You need somebody around you that can acknowledge, recognize and acknowledge the gift, fan the flames of your fire and your passion, inspire and encourage you even when you're feeling down and unmotivated, challenge you and hold you accountable to living your best life, the best possible person you could be at every given moment. You gotta have people around you that's gonna make you move. Being average isn't okay. Being average isn't acceptable. You're going to have to be willing to step out. You're going to have to have some courage. My question is simple. Do you have the courage? Do you have the courage to be something more today than you were yesterday? Are you willing to engage the changes and the challenges that come with it? That's the question. It's not whether or not you can do it. You can do it. The question is, are you prepared to go the distance? Are you committed enough to finish what you start? Are you okay with just being here, just existing, living a life that will not speak of you once you leave this place? You, you, you need to pay attention how quickly people forget people once they're gone. And see, my whole thing is I'm living a life to leave a legacy. You understand me? I'm going to live my life and enjoy my life, but I'm also living a life to leave a legacy. Why? Because I take ownership and responsibility for the progeny I created, for the procreation uh, that I participated in and creating my offspring who will create offspring, who will all be descendants of my lineage. And what does that mean? That means that I want them to have something to benefit from that I did. So I can't have just been average. I can't have just been mediocre. I have. Ha I will have had to make such an imprint that when they say my name, people will say, well, oh. When they say my name, there's an understanding of what's expected of them just by being a part of who I am. Live your life at that level. There's a reason we still talk about 
people from 4,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 400 years ago. They left a legacy. Some of them left horrible legacies, but they left legacies. I don't know what's worse, leaving no legacy at all or leaving a bad legacy. I, I haven't figured that one out. I, I ponder that a lot. You know, would I rather be remembered for something bad than not remembered at all? So because I ponder it and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's, it's crazy, here's my problem with not leaving a legacy at all. People tend to make your life be what they wanted it to be when you haven't created a legacy so strong that it speaks of you. Someone else gets to write the narrative about you after you're gone. So instead of worrying about either of those, I decided I'm just going to make an imprint of a legacy that I can be proud of that I can sit up and say, well, shoot, man, this speaks of me exactly how I want it to. And I'm going to leave that and let it do what it does. That's what I want for each and every person that's in earshot of this video that can hear what I'm saying. Live a life that will speak for you. Look and walk in a way that you can live a life that will speak for you. When you live your life in a way that it speaks for you, you don't have to worry about convincing people of who you are. You don't have to worry about what people will say when you're gone. There's always going to be somebody negative. That's always going to be somebody that wants to remember that time you did this. Or that. But when you have a consistent body of work that says, I showed up, I gave, I filled my space, I touched lives. I changed the environment and the world around me in a positive way. I gave all I had to this destiny, to this purpose, to this life. You can live with that. You can live with that. It's bigger than you. And if you're not investing in something that's bigger than you, that's where your problem lies. You're playing it safe, but there's no victory and security. They got to step out there. And you got to be willing to take the risk. You got to have the courage to take on the fight. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I always say, I live my life on full. I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I can die on E, meaning that I leave no potential untapped. I challenge you to do the same thing. And as I stated at the beginning of this video, if you really want to make a move, you would love what's there in the description box, the 30 day uh, transformation. Um, we do it every often. It's not something that I offer all the time, but we're doing it right now. If you want to be a part of it, sign up for the 30 day transformation uh, and get and get to work with me for 30 days, uh, four weeks, and you'll see what it's about. But do something. Uh, if you're not working with me, you've got to do something. You've got to take it to the next level. You've got to be willing to put your, your entire being into something. Stop playing safe. On that note, I'm out of here, you guys. Have an unbelievable weekend. I'll see you soon.